NYU professor Jay Rosen pointed to the Trump era as the catalyst for what he calls a democratic breakthrough in American journalism that occurred when journalists disproved the former president's claims of election fraud. Mm. So founder of TK News, host of the Useful Ideas podcast, Matt Taibbi, joins us now about to talk about this and some of the other developments in the media. Good to see you, Matt. Thanks for joining us, man. Good to see you both. Hi. Matt, you've, you've written about the Sovietization of the press, um, and obviously I think that Jay Rosen and people like that are very much have contributed to that. What, what exactly did you mean by that term, and, and what do you see as the media under Biden and how they've conducted themselves? Well, I, th I think what happened during the Trump years is that there was a, uh, a gradual move away from in the old model of the press being a, a sort of an independent institutional entity that was separate from politics and towards a new model that was expressed by people like Jim Rutenberg where, uh, of the New York Times, who said that basically Donald Trump is a, is a big enough threat that we have to um, be true to history's judgment, and that meant opposing him. So what we ended up having in the Trump years was, a, you know, the mainstream press was almost uni uni uniformly um, about negative news about Donald Trump. And then there, there was Fox News on the other side, and that's basically our media landscape is, is two separate camps of uh, basically political propaganda, which I think is, is, has, been, has hurt the news media's reputation. Mm -hmm. Well, and I wouldn't honestly have that much of an issue with the partisan press if it was honest. <laughs> and that's part of what you have tracked is a lot of the big stories that were broken in the Trump era turned out to not be true, and especially ones with regards to Russia, and especially ones that just relied on, like, I'm just going to reprint whatever this intelligence agency official tells me. Talk about some of those pieces, because you've tracked that really closely. Yeah, and yeah, you're exactly right. It, it would have been okay if they had stuck to uh, being factual, because you really wouldn't have to alter the old model. There was plenty of negative things about Donald Trump that are true that they could have stuck with. <laughs> right. um, but they, they had, you know, there were stories like the New York Times did a story early in his tenure that the, you know, the Trump campaign had repeated contacts with Russian intelligence. And, you know, it was very lightly sourced. It was sourced to four anonymous current and former officials. And late, later on, uh, there was congressional testimony where James Comey came out and said, was asked about that story. And he said, you know, in the main, it was not true. And what we found out is that there were a lot of stories like this, where there was there was a before version of the story, and then there was an after version that kind of contradicted, like Bounty Gate, right? Like, it, at first we heard that, you know, there, there was a lot to it. And then two months later, we hear the military commander saying, well, we don't really have evidence that this is true. And there were lots and lots and lots of these stories. And that undermines the ability of people to have confidence in the news media, even if they can't stand Donald Trump. Yeah, and it's, you know, this is the thing, and I, we talked about this. And when you see the crash in ratings, CNN losing 45% of its primetime audience and more, you see how much of a dramatic mistake this was in the long run, not just in terms of their credit, not in terms of the ratings, but in terms of the credibility lost with so much of the country. I don't think they can undo it. I really don't. Yeah, I, I think they made a very short term calculation that let's make all the money that we can out of the Trump phenomenon. Um, you know, I talked to some people uh, who are media critics who pointed out that uh, in 2014, 2015, it was typical for a, a station like MSNBC or CNN to be maybe 25th or 30th overall among cable stations um, by January of this year. Uh, all three of the big news networks were always one, two, and three in terms mm -hmm. of the top cable networks overall. And the reason for that is because the news business ate out of the, the mar market share of the entertainment business. Now, that means that the public trusted us less, but watched us more uh, because they were consuming us as entertainment now. But that's going to have a dramatic, there's going to be a dramatic pushback to that because people are you know, no, they don't have Trump anymore, so it's not going to be as entertaining and they don't trust the media anymore. So what are they going to watch us for? That, yeah. that, that that's that's the question. Well, and what do you think? I mean, surely they're trying to come up with some new outrage, you know, yeah. something to make everybody afraid or mad or scared or whatever right now. Got any theories about what that's going to look like? Well, they've come out and said it. Uh, you know, CNN did a story basically saying that Tucker Carlson is the new Trump. And they've gone to extraordinary lengths, it seems to me, to try to 
try to make Carlson into a Trump-like figure that they could do daily news about. Uh, before that, it was Marjorie Taylor Greene. But these these people just aren't Trump. Trump is a unique entity in terms of his ability to generate eyeballs, hits, traffic, all those things. We just he, Without him in the news, they just will not be able to maintain that model. And, and the, the, the problem is, because they, they went to this oppositional, uh, you know, emotionally driven model, you can't just retreat back to reporting the mm-hmm. news, which is the other way you made money before, um, because now, now you're discredited. And I, I, I just don't know what they're going to do. Such an important point, Matt, and we'll continue to track it. Thanks for joining us, man. Wait, really tell us about you. the new book, Matt. Oh, right. New book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got a new book out called uh, The Business Secrets of Drug Dealing, which is uh, I co-authored with a, an actual drug dealer. So <laughs> if you're interested in going into the business, there's lots of secrets in here <laughs> about oh, how, to, wow. how, to, how to avoid getting caught. So, oh. uh, well, but, We're going to do an entire other interview. Just yeah, for that. sure, because that <laughs> right, sounds right. fascinating. Matt, always All great right. to see you. Thank you. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks very much. Take care now. More Rising for you after this.